10,000. Welcome back everyone, this week is going to be slightly different to normal because uh, it's kind of a special week. Last week on this channel I hit 10,000 subscribers. That's kind of hard to say out loud. But if you're on the Discord or you were commenting quite early all the way back in February, <laughs> Jesus. Then you might know that I actually promised a few people that if I ever hit 10,000 subscribers I would do a Q&A. And I cannot believe it, but last week that actually happened. And I've got to say thank you so much to everyone who's just clicked subscribe and clicked like and all those sorts of things. It's absolutely crazy that this might happen to me. When I first started making these videos, I really didn't have a clue what I was doing. I still don't, but I was watching lots of other YouTubers on how to start a YouTube channel and they all said that you shouldn't expect to get to a thousand subscribers within your first year. And I was really prepared for that, I didn't even think this would get that far. This is a hobby to me, this keeps me interested in like the creative work of photography and that sort of thing. And also uh, um, is a good push for me to increase my knowledge of investing. Because investing is something that's quite a new passion to me and I'm, I'm really into it at the minute. At the minute, uh, I, I think I'm gonna have to stick to this for quite a long time. But I started YouTube in February and I cannot believe how fast this has grown. It's not even supposed to happen like this. Apparently the YouTube algorithm doesn't like you if you only upload once per week, which is what I do. So really all I can say is thank you to you guys for sticking with me and having fun on this journey with me. I hope you can stick with me and all the swearing and drinking semen jokes, that sort of thing. <laughs> I hope in the very near future that I can improve the quality of these videos, make them a little bit more entertaining for you guys, and still continue to share everything that I learn as I learn it. A big welcome to lots of new American viewers recently. It seemed that the AT&T video stirred up a lot of emotion for people. But check it out, there's loads of people just arguing about AT&T on there. It's absolutely insane. I didn't realize AT&T was so divisive. Anyway, I promised a QA. and a I don't see why this is going to be interesting, but I'll do it anyway. Okay, first question is from Harry. Do you own any property or just stocks? I don't. I, other than my mortgage, I don't own any property whatsoever. I think I'm really lazy and I don't have the time to do up a property. Uh, I wouldn't know where to start. Also, all the money that you see in my portfolio is all the money I have. I clearly don't have the capital to go out and get a buy to let mortgage and start blowing it on property. It's just not something that's ever been open to me and I think it would take a lot to get it off the ground. I don't even have a fucking pension. That's something I'm gonna have to discuss with you at a later date. Next up from Pablo, could you talk about other financial YouTubers you like to watch and also where did you learn about investing? For a start, I didn't learn about investing. I'm learning investing. But like anyone else, I watch loads of YouTube. Books wise, one of my favorites is One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch is one of the most successful uh, investors ever. He comes very much from a growth perspective rather than the strategy that I'm following currently. But his insights on mindset really speak to me. So that's a really powerful book for me. I'd recommend like audiobook though, because I can barely read. One of the main YouTubers I like, which will probably surprise a few people, is Shelby Church. She's a really popular young millennial YouTuber. She might even be like Gen Z? No, what's the next one after millennial? Can't even remember now. Her videos are full of loads of value about making money and side hustles, that sort of thing. But what I most like about her videos is the B-roll. Oh man, those fucking shots are so good. When I think of the YouTube channel that I want, that's what I want it to look like. Loads of cool cutaways that I film myself that are really relevant, that, you know, just show a bit more insight into my life and how I deal with investing and things like that. That's exactly how I want it. If it takes me a couple of weeks off to get it done, then I might have to do that. Investment YouTube wise, I like to watch loads as much as everybody else. Uh, some of my favorites, I mentioned Cameron Stewart CFA uh, last week or the week before. Fucking excellent with numbers. The same as Sven Carlin. Sven Carlin is like another numbers guy, exceptional with valuation. And Aswath Damodaran, oh, I'm sorry, I've absolutely crucified that name, haven't I? 
But those guys, that's Cameron Stewart, Sven Carlin, and Aswath, they are really, really numbers heavy and data heavy. Very much value investing guys, very strict on the quality data. But I will say their videos are very dry and maybe less entertaining. You've really got to sit down and concentrate hard for a good few hours, but there is so much value in there. Chicken Genius is on the other side of the scale. He's basically invented a way to measure fundamentals of innovation and qualitative data. He's an exceptionally good mentor with a really good eye for a stock and he just don't take no shit. And that's what I really like about him. He's an exceptional mentor for that high risk growth investor and he's got a really good nose for a stock. Whenever he's got a video out, I'm watching it and I take in as much information as I can. And I can't really forget Graham Stephan, can I? For years, I've just been called a skin flip, but Graham Stephan's making it cool in my opinion. The guy speaks to me on a savings and frugality level that I can't explain. Everything about it just makes so much sense to me. And I've realized I've been doing a lot of what he preaches all my life. Just no one has ever actually explained it to me in a way that's socially acceptable. I feel like I'm coming out. I feel like he gives me the power to come out as a frugal saver. <laughs> But if you're into money management, which is the most important part of investing in my opinion, then Graham Stephan's the guy to get to, to grow your wealth. Okay, next question from Name. Uh, how old are you, Paul? Good strategy. Thank you, Name. I am 32. No, wait, 34. Shit, am I 34? Fuck, I might as well be dead. Okay, I don't keep track of birthdays anymore. I actually find them a waste of money. Uh, so I'm pretty sure I'm 34. God, if I was 20 again, I would stop drinking and I would start saving, I think. It'd be great for me to say to anybody who's like even just slightly younger than me, start saving now. I mean, it was great going around getting pissed all the time. I had a lot of fun, but I could have put myself in a much better position by just not going out five days a week and maybe only going out four days a week. <laughs> Oliver Castle asks, do you have an Instagram, mate? Yeah. Funny thing about this channel from anyone who might have seen my earlier videos was that this um, video thing that I'm doing right now is a, a bit of a dirty little secret. None of my friends or family know that I'm doing this. It's mainly because it's a bit fucking weird. Staring at a camera and basically just being my jolly old fucking self. And I said to myself that if I ever hit 10,000 subscribers, I'll tell people about it. And part of keeping that distance was not having an Instagram account or not having a Facebook account just to make sure nobody found out. So I set up an Instagram account a couple of weeks ago, which has basically told everybody in my life, this is something that I'm doing now. It's quite fun though, because once everyone did find out and they found out that 10K was quite a big deal, they may be a nice cake. It was tasty. But it's so weird that we've got to 10,000 subscribers and I haven't promoted this in any way whatsoever in my private life. So if that might be interesting to you, get over onto the Instagram and get following. Chris Pullin asks, uh, another solid video for the Q&A as a new YouTuber myself. Good lads, getting into YouTube, freaking brilliant. I'd love to know how you started making your videos and the gear you used. Also, do you follow football or what team do you support? Okay, a uh, bit to unpack there. Uh, as far as starting making YouTube videos, um, equipment that I use, uh, in the description below, there's a few Amazon links to all of the equipment I use because loads of people ask me what equipment I use all the time. It's just an easy way to go look at it and I don't know, buy it if you really want. But I don't think you need so much equipment yourself. You just need to be bouncy and get over the trauma and the torture of talking to a camera and having to be like you plus. Trust me, it's really fucking weird and I've only just started to get over that. But if there's enough interest, I will do a video one day on all the equipment I use and uh, how I made the studio and all that sort of stuff. I just don't think I'm YouTube experienced enough yet to be able to tell people how I make videos and things. Football though, I will analyze the fuck out of an England game and you will not get me away from a World Cup. But domestic and Premier League, nah. I don't feel the customer gets value from football in comparison to how much money it's made. So nah, I'm not in on domestic football. Check out that for an investment analysis on football. <laughs> Next up, James asks, what are your top five dividend stocks you have now and what other five dividend stocks are you looking to buy? I'm not gonna go into five because that will take me forever. But the ones that I own and my favorites are Tyson, Segro and Store before Buffett started announcing that he was involved. I wish I had managed to put more in before Buffett got involved. 
The ones that I currently want are KLA and VW. I kind of want to get into that semiconductor market. What I will say is that I'm pissed that I've missed waste management, Hikma Pharmaceuticals, ASML. I was staring at them like in March. Why didn't I buy them? Ryan asks, a good explanation of your life timeline would be great. Did, did you go to uni? What's your job title? I think you said you work for the NHS. Kids, etc. You seem like a typical normal working class lad, but with a bit of financial education. It would be great for people in a similar kind of background to hear your story to show you don't need to be some middle class or rich person to create your own wealth. Okay, Ryan, <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, I'm not middle class. Certainly not fucking middle class. Well, I might be now, but when I grow up, no, I'm like, yeah, my family's all working class. I was the first one to go to uni to do uh, a dog shit degree. Uh, I would never recommend going to uni, by the way. Um, that's my personal opinion. Unless you need to have a degree to qualify for the job that you want, like if you want to be a doctor or something like that, then yeah, you should go to uni. Anything else, you can learn yourself. I was always so annoyed at people taking photography degrees when I was a wedding photographer and I just started doing it. I am well behind the idea that it's experience that gets you the job that you want. So if you're young and thinking about going to university, but you don't need a qualification for the job that you want, just have a think before you go and get in fuck tons of debt. If however, you just want to go to uni to get pissed and shag about, it's the place for you. Q Space asks, what was your job history from your first paying job to your current job? This is gonna be fun. Um, I'm not gonna go through every single job I've ever had. That would be insane. But I think my first job was like in Wix. And I hated my life. And then through uni, I worked the normal jobs like bars and stuff. And then I worked in the RBS Treasury Reserve where I didn't understand at the time what exactly I was doing, but I was basically allocating people's money to uh, government bonds. I, th I think that's what it was. I still don't know for sure exactly what I was doing there. I got sacked from that job because I was underproductive and I had no interest in finance whatsoever. I learned absolutely nothing from that job. All I did was get to speak to celebrities every now and then. It's like a celebrity call center. That is how I describe it. Uh, I was a firefighter for about eight years. That was boring. And I was a wedding photographer for quite a few years. That has probably got me all the equipment that's in this room, my camera, uh, my cameras, and all the lenses. I also filmed a few music videos and a few adverts, which is kind of where I've got my idea for filming from. I think the old website might even still be up as well. But that's where all this yearn for creativity came from. Uh, I really fucking hated weddings. You can get fed up of happiness really quickly. They're also a complete financial drain on a couple. Why is anybody getting married in this day and age? I just, I don't get it, I'm sorry. Okay, rant over, Mrs. will not be happy with that one. <laughs> She's only just started watching it and I'm already... <laughs> but I quit all that to become a paramedic and that's the job that I do now. Now being a paramedic is a bit of a weird one. It's extremely exhausting, but there is a bit of job satisfaction as well. But while this job is extremely exhausting and on occasions rewarding, you don't really want to know about that. You just really want to know about my job security and how much I earn. At its core fundamentals, the job is essentially just a production line that deals in the commodity of death and stupidity. But either way, those commodities aren't going anywhere soon. So my job security is actually rather good until my job hears about what I just said. And I've just had a pay rise to NHS band six, which is apparently 31,000 a year. So that's the money that I'm earning and I wouldn't say that's a particularly high paid job. Certainly not as high as some people who are attempting to do this investment thing. So I do still have to scrimp and save to continue to reinvest. I have no financial education. I don't come from a family who has previously invested. I'm pretty much the first of the generation to consider what I'm supposed to do with my finances. But the good thing about your job, no matter what job it is, is that you can apply something from your current job to investments. For me, as part of my job, I have to continuously develop my skills. And to do that, we have to read a lot of articles and a lot of studies. We have to do it all the time. And as part of our training, we've all been taught this thing called critical analysis. And for me, it applies so well to investments. When I talk about quantitative and qualitative analysis, this all comes from that training. 
we're taught to look at papers from a quantitative level and a qualitative level. And that's how I break down stocks and companies. It fits in my head because that's how I've been trained. In the same way, if you've got a job in like IT, something like that, you might be more afraid with cloud technology. You might be able to apply something there. And in the other direction, if you're say an engineer, you might know a lot more about renewables. You might be able to understand more easily the efficiency of electricity transfer. In our daily lives and from our jobs, we can use these things to apply to investments. We can use these skills of problem solving from our jobs and then combine it with the power of the internet and we're able to be much more well-informed and able to make better decisions with investments. Not just hearing about a stock from a mate down the pub. That's how it used to be done. The Aviator 14 asks, how do you decide how much money you will put in the app monthly? Pay all bills and use percentage of what's left. Use a percentage of the check despite the bills and use what's left for personal use. Okay, I might not be the best person for this at the moment. Right now, what I'm doing is an experiment to fill my ISA. I am trying to put in around 1,600 a month and I am scrimping from everywhere. It's really tough. I've got a really good idea for how I think wealth grows and that will be in a later video where I'll go into a lot more detail about it. But essentially, I think the rule is pay yourself first. So when my paycheck comes into my bank account, I take a thousand pound out of it right away. That comes to me and it goes straight into my investments. Then my bills get paid and I live off whatever's left. I worked out it's around three to 400 quid a month. I have to live off that because everything else is in investments that I can't get out. I also don't budget yet. I'm pretty sure if I'm gonna live a lifestyle like this sustainably into the future, I need to get some budgeting done. And I need some help with that. I think I'm pretty Graham Stephan Frugal just naturally. And I really would in future videos like to talk about something like that. I think it'd be really fun to show you some of the shit I do to not spend money. So if there's any um, budgeting YouTubers out there that wanna get involved and help me with my finances, um, I'm putting that call out there now. Seriously, if anyone's really good at budgeting money, uh, come at me, cause I, I wanna know all about it. I think a budget might help me be more comfortable in the long run, because right now my goal is to fill my ISA with 20 grand in one year. And I'm only doing that because I've started this so late in life. If you're 18, 20 years old, you can start on like 20 quid a week, because by the time you're 30, you're probably gonna have like 500 grand. Me, if I'm gonna build anything substantial, I have to be pretty aggressive with my saving. I'm not really clear on what the end goal is yet. I just wanna start making some money. I'm still not sure if financial freedom is just a bit of a fad, but I am gonna put together a bit of a goal and I'm gonna discuss that in a future video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Thank you so much for your subscription, your likes, all that stuff. I cannot believe this YouTube channel is in the position that it's in. I, it's incredible. I hope this video has given you a bit of a better picture of what I'm about and I hope that's helped if you were actually interested in that at all. Thank you so much again for watching. Feel free to ask anything else in the comments below and catch up with us on the Discord. Uh, it's totally free. There's loads of people in there talking about investments, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's all fun. And if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, subscribe and invest.